Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Since the Rogue Trader beta is out, I thought it would be useful to put together a guide that walks through the basic mechanics you need to know while going through the game. Also, please note that I won't review classes in this video as that's a big enough topic to cover all on its own. Let me know down in the comments if there's any other content regarding Rogue Trader that you would like to see a video on. First, let's start with the character screen. To the right of your portrait, you'll see your character level. The beta leveling system is incomplete, but upon release it will be your typical variety of completing quests, killing enemies, and passing skill checks. If I was a Psyker, there will be another dial below this letting you know what my Psy rating is, which determines what kind of Psyker abilities are available to you. Further to the right is a list of your characteristics. Weapon skill measures your ability to hit with melee weapons such as swords, hammers, axes, or your bare fist. It also measures your ability to parry melee attacks, which deflects all of the damage. Ballistic skill measures your ability to hit with ranged weapons such as sniper rifles, flamers, and bolters. Strength measures your physical power, which includes unarmed combat and the ability to move heavy objects. Every point in strength will also increase your athletic skill. Athletics is used while exploring the environment to move things out of the way or jump long distances. There have been a couple of instances where a new path to loot opened up for me due to having a party member with this skill, but thus far it seems more like a nice to have as opposed to something that is absolutely necessary. The next characteristic is toughness, which is the main stat that contributes to your wounds, and below your portrait is a green bar showing how many wounds you have. Wounds is a measurement of how much punishment your character can take before they are injured or die. If you take more than 50% of your total wounds and damage within one round, then you will receive a fresh injury. Injuries have penalties that reduce your character's stats in different ways depending upon the type of injury you have received. At the end of every combat, your wounds will be completely healed, but injuries remain. Fresh injuries can be removed with a medikit. However, if that does not happen within five rounds, it will become an old injury. Old injuries require both a medikit and a medikai skill check before they can be removed. If you have three or more injuries, they become a trauma. In addition to penalizing character stats, traumas impose a negative effect and can only be removed by resting on your ship. Please note that you can also gain injuries by walking over traps. Circling back to toughness, not only does it contribute to wounds, but it also measures your character's ability to shrug off injuries, and every point here will be added to Karus, which measures your ability to resist negative effects such as poison and disease. All of this is a must-have for any character who is going to take a lot of punishment. Next is agility, which is measurement of your quickness and reflexes. This stat also measures your movement rate, which is how many squares your character can move during combat. Agility is also used to calculate your dodge, which is a skill used to negate damage from melee or ranged attacks. Dodge is a percentage chance based on 30 plus your agility score minus the enemy's perception. When successfully dodging a ranged area of effect, such as a grenade, you will literally move out of the impacted area. If for whatever reason that is not possible, then you will receive a grazing hit, which is equal to 50% of the attack's normal damage. Directly below the characteristics menu, you'll also see your dodge reduction, which is how much you lower an enemy's ability to dodge your attacks. If you are using a melee weapon, then your perception plus half of your agility is used to determine your dodge reduction stat. Ranged weapons will boost this stat automatically. Every point of agility will also increase your demolition skill. Demolitions measures your ability to pick up mines and use them to blast doors open. This is a monster must have skill. There are mines and traps everywhere that you'll need to pick up and blasting doors is a nice alternative if you don't have anyone with high ranks in tech use. Definitely make sure at least one of your party members has this. The next characteristic is intelligence, which measures acumen and general knowledge. Every point here counts towards several skills, including Logic, Lore Warp, and Lore Xenos, which all give you additional dialogue options in specific situations. All of them are definitely nice to have and will inform you about the world, but thus far don't consider them a necessity. As already mentioned, Medikai allows you to heal injuries while clearing sickness and disease. There should definitely be at least one person on the team who is skilled in this area, if not two. Finally, tech use allows you to use and repair complex machines. 
absolutely a must have. There are opportunities everywhere to put this to use and it will give you more loot or even open up different ways to resolve a situation. Make sure somebody has this. Circling back to characteristics, perception measures your awareness and the acuteness of your senses. Obviously, every point here will also increase your awareness skill, which allows you to notice traps, ambushes, and hidden objects. This is absolutely another must-have skill. As mentioned before, traps are everywhere, and if you cannot easily locate them, this game is not going to be much fun. There is also plenty of hidden loot that can only be uncovered with awareness, so having this skill will give you more weapons and accessories as well. Next on the list is Willpower, and this characteristic allows you to both use and resist Psyker abilities while also exerting your will upon other people. It's not clear to me yet if it's worth investing in this characteristic if you are not a Psyker. The last characteristic is Fellowship, and it measures your ability to lead and be persuasive. Every point in fellowship increases several skills, including coercion and persuasion, which can both be used to convince a person to see things your way, and honestly, I think your team should be skilled in both areas. There have already been multiple instances where I could coerce someone, but persuasion was not presented as an option, and vice versa. Like Lord Xenos and Lord Warp, Lore Imperium will give you more dialogue options regarding the Imperium, which is definitely nice to have, but thus far my 30 plus hour playthrough does not appear to be necessary. Commerce helps you build business ventures and negotiate contracts. This is not a skill you can use early in the game, and I'm honestly not sure yet how helpful it is late game. Finally, your fellowship bonus is used to calculate resolve. Resolve determines the amount of momentum you gain at the beginning of a turn and after killing an enemy. Momentum is a party-wide stat measured by a blue bar right above your talents. If this stat reaches 175 or 25, you can use a heroic or desperate act respectively, and these are game-changing class abilities. Desperate acts are usually paired with some sort of negative effect, while heroic acts are only positive. We will cover all the available heroic and desperate acts in a class overview video. The first use of a heroic act in combat will cost 50 points, and the cost will increase by 25 with each subsequent use. At the beginning of every combat, this stat will start at 100 and will steadily increase or decrease due to several factors. Every time a turn starts for a party member who has not used a heroic or desperate act in combat, momentum will increase by an amount equal to the character's resolve. When killing an enemy, the party gains momentum equal to the attacker's resolve plus the difficulty modifier of the enemy, which is determined by how powerful the enemy is. If the wounds of a party member drop below zero, then the entire party loses momentum equal to the resolve of the fallen ally times 10. When a character uses a heroic act, their resolve is dropped to zero for the remainder of combat. Keep in mind that some classes have abilities which rely heavily on resolve, so you have to make these decisions carefully. Alright, now that we reviewed all the characteristics and skills, let's circle back to the bar right below characteristics. First on the list is Deflection, which determines the amount of damage that is redacted anytime an enemy hits this character. Typically, you get deflection from heavier armor that reduces your dodge. Next on the bar is armor, and this measures the percentage of armor that is reduced after you have been hit and damage is deflected. So in Abelard's case, if he got hit for 5 damage, then 3 of it would be deflected or essentially neutralized, and then the damage would be further reduced by 45%. Keep in mind that most weapons have an armor penetration rating, which determines the amount of target's armor can be reduced and consequently impacts the amount of damage that target will take. In addition, some ranged weapons can over-penetrate, which means one shot can go through cover or hit multiple enemies. Finally, warp, mental, and machine damage are considered to be irreducible and will completely ignore your armor. Before we move on from the screen, let's take another look at weapons. First, you'll notice the damage that my weapon can do, and this is important because again, weapon and ballistic skills only impact whether or not you can hit with a weapon. They do not determine how much damage you will do. We have already covered penetration, over penetration, and dodge reduction. Note that some abilities and powerful ranged weapons such as my sniper rifle can push an enemy back, causing them to collide with the environment or other characters. Many long range weapons come with an additional hit chance, giving you an even greater chance to connect with your target. 
Rate of fire determines how many bullets your weapon releases with each trigger pull, and range is the maximum amount of distance you can hit an enemy. It's much easier to hit a target if you are within the weapon's optimal range, which is half of whatever the maximum range is. Next is max ammo, which is important to know because if a weapon runs out of ammunition, you have to manually reload it. There is a talent that gives you one free reload every battle. Finally, you can see a list of attacks this weapon is capable of, but we'll get into that more in the combat section. Note that both weapon sets have two slots available, which allows you to use two melee weapons or one melee and one ranged weapon at the same time. You can switch between your first and second weapon set freely, allowing you to easily use melee or ranged weapons depending on the situation. Now that the character screen has been covered, let's switch over to combat. At the start of combat, you will be able to position characters in various spots on the battlefield depending on how many movement points they have. This option is unavailable to you if you have been ambushed, so it's important to have someone with high awareness or a party member like Adira who will warn you when trouble is coming. Once all of your party has been placed, you can start the fight. Each character rolls separately for initiative, and a bar on the left side of the screen tells you what order they will act. At the top of this bar, you can see how many characters in total are involved in this combat scenario. At the bottom of the screen, you will see your portrait, and right underneath it is the amount of wounds you currently have. To the left are green marks, which designate your movement points. You use one movement point to move one tile, one movement point for every odd diagonal tile, and then two movement points for every even diagonal tile. When you click on the square that you want to move to, you're going to see a hologram of your character and the lines will show you what enemies you are able to target from that particular tile. To the right of your portrait are the action points which are used to activate talents or abilities. Typically you can only use one attacking talent per round unless you trigger something that gives you more attacks. In addition, typically once you attack, you cannot move. All the way to the left of the bar are four usable item slots that can hold med kits, grenades, or stems that give you temporary buffs. Grenades always hit the area you designate, but depending on enemy statistics, they may deal reduced damage. Moving over to the right, you can see that the weapon I'm holding has two attack options. Single shot requires one AP and will hit a single creature from up to 30 cells away. In addition, because I'm using a weapon capable of overpenetration, you see not only does the character I am highlighting light up, but also the enemy behind him is at risk. You also have a burst fire option. Burst fire allows you to release a volley of bullets that potentially hit multiple targets. When using this option or any other area of effectability, you'll see shaded cells, representing the area you intend to shoot in and the percentage chance for you to actually hit enemies. Obviously, this attack can hit your party members, so you have to be very careful when using it and also note that your shots can miss, which again can result in friendly fire or hitting objects you didn't intend to. Most weapons capable of burst fire also have a recoil rating that measures the volley fire hit chance reduction. Air of effects that automatically hit such as grenades will just show damage numbers instead. Most melee weapons will give you the ability to target a single character or up to three adjacent enemies. Right next to your available attacks is a meter that tracks how many bullets you have used. You can click this to reload your weapon. Right above this is a bar measuring veil degradation. When you use Psyker abilities, this bar will increase, and the more powerful the ability, the faster the rating will shoot up. As it gets higher, more and more random negative phenomena will occur, including pulling in chaos creatures. To the right of your portrait, you see a list of the talents or abilities you can potentially select. Hovering over the talent will give you information, like its action point cost, range, cooldown, and of course, what it will actually do. At the top of the screen, you can see portraits for all of your party members, and right next to those portraits are your buffs, or negative effects they are currently experiencing. You can hover over them to get more information about how your party is impacted. If you or an enemy are directly adjacent to a hostile character who is holding a melee weapon, attempting to move out of that tile will trigger an attack of opportunity. The chance to hit and damage are calculated as a normal attack. Characters get a melee superiority bonus if two or more characters are adjacent to the same enemy. Rogue Trader uses a cover system to shield you from damage. A half shield symbol represents partial coverage, which reduces the chance to hit you by 35%. A shield with a skull on it represents full cover. 
which reduces the chance to hit you by 60%. To make an attack from behind full cover, your character steps into an unprotected cell and then steps back behind the cover. Enemies can only hit you with a ranged single target attack behind cover if they see the cell you are sitting in or if they can see the cell you have to move into in order to make the attack. Cover does not protect you from area of effect or melee attacks. In addition, both melee and ranged area of effect attacks can completely obliterate your cover. To pass a skill check, including a weapon or ballistic skill check to hit an enemy, the game uses a D100 system. Whatever the stat check is, you must either hit exactly that number or less in order to clear the check. A higher rating in whatever skill you are trying to clear will increase the number you need to land under in order to pass the check. A critical hit will typically do 150% of the damage that a normal attack would do. The base critical hit chance for ranged attacks is 10%, while it is 0% for melee attacks. When firing a ranged weapon, you get an additional 1% critical hit chance for every percentage hit on a target above 95%. When in melee, your critical hit chance increases by 2% for every point of superiority between your weapon skill and that of the enemy you are attacking. Quick note before we get into your profit factor, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. This information lets me know which videos the community is enjoying. If you want to support this kind of content, please consider becoming a member of the channel where you will get access to full playthrough episodes. All right, let's talk about cargo reputation and your profit factor. When picking up an item, you have the freedom to either place it in your inventory if there's actually a use for it, or more likely you'll add it to your cargo. As you collect more items, you'll develop different types of cargo for armor, weapons, xeno trophies, and the like. The game doesn't make this clear, but if you talk with Janris Danrak on the bridge of your ship, he will give you access to all the stores you have visited thus far. When talking to a vendor, you do not actually buy items from them. Instead, a collection of items are available based upon your reputation with that faction and your profit factor. Profit factor is represented by a number in the lower right and is essentially a measurement of your overall wealth. As your rogue trader empire grows, this number will increase. Every item in the vendor's inventory will have a PF number that lets you know how high your profit factor must be in order to take it. Directly below that is an RP or reputation points number. You must clear both hurdles in order to be able to take the item from the vendor. To increase your reputation with a vendor, you click on the reputation tab, which opens up the list of cargo you currently have available. Any cargo that is over 100% can be traded to the vendor and will increase your reputation points. Once both hurdles have been cleared, you are free to take all the items that you have access to. Let's move on to the global map. When sitting on a new star system at the bottom middle of the screen, you'll see an option that says chart new routes. Clicking on this will reveal new paths for your ship to travel. There are four types of paths, and the redder it is, the more likely you will experience danger. You can be attacked while traveling or experience random negative situations in the warp that affect your crew. Every time you click chart new routes, you'll see a number in the same area of the screen. This shows how much navigator insight you have, and it can be used for two purposes. One purpose is to reduce the amount of danger on a route you want to travel or have already traveled before. When clicking on a planet, you'll see a symbol right at the top that allows you to reduce the route difficulty. Each rank of Navigator Insight will reduce the danger of the route by one, so you need three ranks in order to take a route from red to green. The other purpose is to show you how to reach a SAR system you are not close to yet. So when clicking on a faraway system, you again have a square at the top that allows you to chart a course. You must have enough Navigator Insight to chart all the routes required to get to that system. All right, finally, let's review ship combat, starting with the void ship management window. Your engine, shields, all spec, armors, and weapons must be upgraded with components you get from other ships or ones you purchase from a ship vendor with tokens. Your hull and ram can be upgraded with scrap that you accumulate from battling with other ships. You are able to ram directly into enemy ships. Your hull is also repaired with scrap, so you cannot just spend it frivolously. 
Like your character, the ship levels up over time and you can choose different skills or special abilities. Over time, different party members will also gain abilities that you can use during ship combat. These abilities can only be used once per turn and the cooldowns are random. Sometimes these abilities have to charge over the course of multiple battles. In combat, you cannot stop during a movement, but you can move in multiple steps to position your ship. You have weapons that fire in front, to the left, and to the right of your ship. You have nothing that fires behind you, and you must be within a certain distance from your target in order to hit it. That means maneuvering is everything for both you and the enemies you are going up against. You can deploy torpedoes, which must be moved separately into enemy ships, although they will self-destruct after a certain amount of turns. Currently, I am not seeing any damage when hitting an enemy with torpedoes, but I assume that will be fixed relatively soon. You have one HP pool for the hull of your ship and four individual directional HP pools for shields that are visible around the ship. You can restore ships during combat using the restart shield ability above your right side attack button. Different enemy ships have unique abilities they can use. Pirates can flat out flee combat while Adari ships can create hollow fields. Defeating enemy ships will reward you with loot and scrap that can be used to upgrade your ship further. That completes my new player guide for the Rogue Trader Beta. Please let me know down in the comments if there's any other content for this game you are looking for. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care!